Good evening and welcome to Let's Talk Crypto, the live stream where we talk everything crypto. Of course, we look at news and price action and we try to find opportunities throughout the market. Whether we go bullish or bearish, guys, we want to make sure that we are on the right side of the market. Up or down, we have a plan ready to go. Right now, we see Bitcoin and the market generally looking a little slumpy. We can see we're getting a little bit of a pullback. We anticipate maybe a little bit of a breather to the downside so we can buy the dip. And if you appreciate the analysis this evening, do yourself a favor, subscribe to the channel and click the bell button so you don't miss out on any of my future videos. Of course, you can follow me on all those socials and I'm here every evening, 730 Eastern talking crypto. All right. So generally speaking, you know, looking a little red, but not significant, nothing to be totally worried about. But at the end of the day, you know, um, we've been looking at the potential areas that we could break down from. And if that were to happen, we have some of that dry powder ready to go buying those dips. Let's look at the general market before we talk about news. Of course, guys, don't forget if you have any coins or any projects that you want me to cover here on the channel, you have a couple of options. Let me know in the comment section below. Let me know in the chat or you can hit me up on all those socials and I'll definitely, you know, put some focus on some of those projects right now we can see that the general market is either going sideways or we are actually getting a pump to the upside for example polygon matic is doing its own thing we talked about polygon matic this this uh, this afternoon three hours ago i released a video on polygon matic telling you what i felt and i do that every day around three to four o'clock eastern time i release a video on one altcoin per day and this is why i ask you guys if you are interested in any project let me know and maybe i'll release a focused video telling you or giving you insight into my strategy um let's continue here what else do we see of course polygon is rocketing I'm, I'm i'm afraid of polygon meaning i'm afraid of many things i'm afraid of not being totally in because they definitely don't want to miss out you know fomo is real but at the same time, I'm also afraid of shorting. I don't know if I should. we should be shorting Polygon. Right now, Polygon is looking good. And of course, if we break trends to, to the downside, if we break a trend and we break that trend that we are currently in, which is up, we could definitely get a nice little retracement potentially by the dip, right? So, you know, it's, it's a relationship here that we have. It's a lens that we have to have. Whether we go bullish or bearish, we need to be able to shift back and forth. And each time we shift, we take risk. And that's it. We need to take calculated risk with good risk to reward ratios. OK, so we're going to analyze a few of these tokens today, or a few of these projects and come up with the strategy if we go long or short. Of course, we're going to use Bitcoin as a leading indicator. But most of these projects, as we speak, are very hesitant. They're going either going sideways or taking a pullback. You know, look, look at Chainlink looking a little slumpy. Um, Aptos, of course, looking a little bit slumpy. It's been quite a kind of quiet for the last little while. But we saw near protocol running to the top i definitely want to take note of this i want to look at near this evening i'm going to write write this down near protocol definitely want to see what's been up with that did it break the bearish divergence did it invalidate the bearish divergence many altcoins have been invalidating that bearish divergence and getting another pop to the upside and of course guys that's what happens when you become very very over but the volatility volatility is real when you get into overbought territory regarding the rsi and that whole momentum shift to the upside so right now we're looking at algrand algrand is also pretty over you know overbought it could be in a in a you know a pullback scenario so i'm going to be looking at algo checked algorand and see those charts hedera hashgraph i love hedera hashgraph the price action has been doing very very well and when things are too good too good to be true we look for pullbacks okay so there's a couple on my list that i want to look at this evening of course what we use is coin gecko and we look at the top gainers and the top lunar losers in the last 24 hours and it gives us you know the extremities which coins are pumping maybe we should be taking some profits which coins are dumping maybe we should be buying the dips okay so let's get right into the news guys you know i like to to cover the news before we look at price action right now we can see that dubai dubai did release some rules regarding cryptocurrency it prohibits the privacy coins and we talked about this before on the channel this whole narrative behind privacy coins could be a little bit risky privacy coins are one of the main you know genres that regulators are definitely looking at and this is why it is hard to find some of these privacy coins on centralized exchanges like monero 
okay so some of these uh, um, privacy coins are not listed because exchanges are afraid that they're going to be targeted by regulators because they are basically hosting these privacy coins so these new rules out of dubai you know dubai is a, a, a big big popular crypto hub and you know what usually in this case when some when 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 there's this much uh, this amount of influence okay usually it, you know it kind of sticks so i'm wondering what the rest of the world or the other bullish countries are going to be doing regarding privacy coins i understand i get it we need to find a happy medium you know ha finding a happy medium where we do have some privacy and we keep regulators happy and we as a crypto community can continue um enjoying the the space and the the environment that we like without um, any hesitation or risk is a lot better but you know obviously giving us options giving us the privilege to choose is obviously really good guys let me know in the comment section below what you think should we be supporting our privacy coins that we currently have or should we be understanding and have that give and take scenario and you know regulate some of these um tokens that could be targeted by regulators okay so that's the you know there's there's many tokens that could be targeted and one of the narratives is definitely privacy tokens kraken what's going on kraken kraken becomes the latest crypto company to be examined by the sec you know for potentially you know offering unregistered securities and of course this is going to be right on the radar of the sec and kraken is pretty well known and it's loved amongst the community we know kraken and what they're about but if they're going to be examined how long is this going to take how is this going to affect the market how is this going to affect kraken and anybody that is involved in that ecosystem or in the in the exchange itself so something to be aware of kraken is right now being uh put under a microscope let's see what happens there let's keep in in touch with that the federal reserve publishes a new 31 page bitcoin research report quote bitcoin shares most of the features tell me something that we don't know most of the features of a store of value such as gold we've been saying this finally thank you for listening thank you for coming around and they conclude um is bitcoin is responsive to both monetary and macroeconomic macroeconomic news so yeah we we've, we've known this thank you for coming around you know what I, better late than never of course but the federal reserve is definitely you know at least acknowledging that bitcoin is an option and this is really good really good uh crash coming eh. release the crack in black swan you know what crr i'm not i'm not too convinced that it's going to be a black swan event i know kraken's big but how influential can they be i don't know i don't know like i'm not really feeling that i don't think it barely even made um big headlines on on twitter to be honest like i expected a lot more i don't know i don't know i hope it's not i don't think it will be but in a crash what do you mean by crash an absolute lower low where bitcoin's going out to 10 10k i don't know that I, I don't see that really happening really quickly and if it does happen it's going to be a grind and if and, and i'm not i'm not totally convinced so i don't think it will be a, an absolute black swan in my opinion if something were to happen with binance definitely that's a not even a black swan because black swans you can't anticipate you shouldn't be able to anticipate a black swan right where with things with these exchanges we kind of anticipate the risk we understand that they could happen and that's not really a back a black swan right so by definition it'll be devastating to see a, a you know another exchange get hit but i don't think it's i don't think it's going to be th that detrimental all right let's talk about the metaverse what's going on with the metaverse we see sandbox and we saw decentraland getting a little bit of volume obviously sandbox has been pumping and i think it's based on this fact that the middle east the saudi arabian you know partners that they've created are definitely supporting the metaverse and development especially on sandbox which is really bullish you know that there's money in these parts of the world you know that they're ready to deploy whenever they see opportunity and this is where it's at this is where it's at we have the cash flow we see the price pump will you be able to would you be interested in buying this green at price action right now for sandbox i'm not sure personally my whole idea is never buy into green candles never buy the pumps and you know wait for those pullbacks wait for areas of support but if you're gonna degen and you're gonna you know follow some of these fundamentally uh, bullish news that that basically get released you know 
maybe you might be able to make some gains you know all the power to you guys whatever you do just make sure you pro uh, you employ proper risk management Saudi Arabia, definitely, definitely heavyweights when it comes to investing, okay? Kevin O'Leary, this guy's back. This guy, I thought he was done. I thought he was done opening his mouth, but he's back. He's just talking about Binance again, spreading the FUD, spreading the fear, and this is what we were talking about, you know, could this be a capitulation? Is he trying to induce a capitulation event on the crypto market? You know, should I have a feeling this guy's either bought or he's being blackmailed. Why is he still talking about this? I think the, the the majority of us in crypto right now are over it. We're done. We don't want to know anymore. We're done with this. FTX is old news, right? And I'm, I feel really bad for all the people that lost money in that whole fiasco. But at the end of the day, it's done. Like we need to find a way to recuperate, and that and and that's that's the building, 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 and moving on. There's no point of crying over spilled milk at this point. So Kevin O'Leary, find a hobby, find something to do. Okay, I'm sure you have enough money to go keep yourself busy. Leave Binance alone. Get away from crypto because so far you've been poisoning it. Okay, German banks are moving into Bitcoin. This is positive, obviously. Making strategic investments in ETF and market maker companies. This is what we need. We need some heavyweight banks, heavyweight e economic heavyweight countries to come in and be a part and play with Bitcoin. This is what we want. And little by little, we're seeing interests in some of these European countries. Uh, obviously, um, North American countries, Central American countries, we're getting a little bit of exposure growing day by day, and this is really good. You know, Africa is definitely a big mover right now regarding Bitcoin and the adoption of cryptocurrency, which is really good. You know what I mean? So at the end of the day, little by little, we will definitely get that adoption, global mass adoption. And that's really interesting to see Germany, a heavyweight in Europe, taking on or at least moving into Bitcoin. Really good, really good. Um this is another one look at this guy this guy thinks he he believes he's trying to convince everybody that he created bitcoin that he's one of the creators or the creator of bitcoin and he lost his copyright claim in the uk court this is satoshi are you kidding me not a chance i'm glad this is over hopefully we don't see this again uh what else do we got here okay argentine president let's talk about argentina for a second argentina has been struggling many times cyclically many times over and over regarding economics they are definitely struggling and to have an, a president that is pro bitcoin could spell out an opportunity for them for their civilization for their economy for their people being able to live um self-sustained and and without intervention from any other foreign or um, especially american uh, influence so inflation is a crime that favors politi politicians and harms the private sector so what he's trying to do is eliminating central banks that's it and the only way to do that is become decentralized this is why he's pro bitcoin and you know all the power to him this is the thing when we see countries that are in a problematic state economically they look for solutions and of course we always say this on the channel and of course coming from a programmer's perspective because that's what i do software is a solution and if it doesn't offer a solution nobody's going to be interested and right now people are interested in bitcoin because it offers solutions and so does other altcoins all many altcoins offer many great solutions for everyday problems and this is why people are waking up to the possibility that this is the future that blockchain could offer a lot of potential uh, solutions for common day problems so really bullish overall bitcoin argentine president let's go for it let's do it uh we talked about this this is probably still in play this battle that is happening between these two uh, crosses the golden cross cross and the death cross still happening let's see what's happening with bitcoin get right into these charts bitcoin is still hesitating now um for those of you that didn't watch my previous videos let's do a quick quick recap you know i'm still feeling that a potential pattern could be playing out here it could be an inverse cup and handle just saying not 100 percent but if we do come down and get a bart Simpson back down to these levels which is at about 21,400, guys we are looking at the neckline of a potential inverse cup and handle consolidation rounded top this is nice and round it's looking rounder than ever like this is so nice right and i know it sounds you know it's the opposite why am i celebrating you know bearish price action and the only reason is is because i want to buy the dip and if you're a true bull you want to pack those bags for the next pump to the upside and that's exactly what i want to do i want to capitalize on the volatility to the downside and if i could short 
I will. And if I find an opportunity to buy the dip at a good fire sale, I'm definitely going to do that. Make sure, guys, that you follow the channel, subscribe, click the bell button so you don't miss out on any of the opportunities that I do find here on the channel. I release two videos per day, one around four o'clock dedicated to one altcoin. And of course, 730 Eastern, I go live and we talk about news and price action and again, find opportunities. Also, feel free to follow me on all those socials. And if you're into podcasts, you can check me out on Spotify. So right now, if we do break down th below the $22,550 mark or so, I'm expecting this to cascade a little bit further down. Now, of course, you might say, Mike, why are you so bearish? And again, it's just to buy the dip. And my next area of interest would be about $21,450 to about you know, $20,800 or so right within this consolidation period looking left. That's the handle of this potential cup and handle. Now, what I also want to do is take a, a, a bullish perspective here for a second, because we are consolidating. We are holding up. We are, kill, you know, basically, in fact, we are creating a higher low as we speak. We didn't you know even touch this trend line yet and if you get a, um if you um, get a trend line that's happening right around here you can see that we are still upward sloping definitely and if you look at these tops it looks like around the top almost like a head and shoulders formation not with a clear head or shoulder but definitely like a, a, an arrow or an upward i don't even know what to call this but we could be you know doing something like this and this is very indicative of a of pivot point the reason being is because this side of this um price action is where you see your bearish divergence and this is typical of a head and shoulders formation the shoulder and the head show you bearish divergence and the next shoulder shows you the continuation right so downwards uh, uh upwards price action downwards our side momentum we got our pivot and now we're continuing to the downside with the continuation of this bearish divergence and again guys i have no crystal ball to tell you exactly what's happening but if we start breaking key levels we can see this price action come down especially with the fact on the four hour we haven't reset this rsi it hasn't gotten to um oversold territory just yet and if you look at the macd it is still looking bearish look at the histogram bars we talked about this potential cluster of histogram bars that could be playing out and that we should get resistance um right at this trend line and we did and we're trying to right now get into the bearish control zone regarding these emas once again and if that were to happen we're going to get another impulse to the downside but the question is do the bears have enough to break this level of support are we going to get volume in that's the thing nobody knows statistically speaking my bias right now my opinion is looking for a buy the dip opportunity there's no point of taking risk with that being said we need to be quick into going long if the opportunity also presents itself so this is why i want to kind of add to this ta today this evening i want to look at this as also a channel a sideways channel okay and many individuals you know may be looking only at a sideways channel not anticipating that it could be a retracement or a dip opportunity so let's look at the where's the channel tool parallel channel tool and obviously we're gonna you know find some confluence with some of these um, areas that i already put in but you can see that we do have a heart line here that we need to pay attention to uh, we kind of peeked over it and fell right below it peeked over it fell right below it and you know we're, we're, we're looking at this heart line as a potential area of resistance and support. We got support here once on this heart line, okay, before. Let's kind of zoom in. We got support, we got resistance, eh, and now we are still kind of bouncing between this range, okay? So if we break above the $23,850 or so, we could get another leg up and get another rocket to the top. It's very possible. And then I'll get stopped out. Sure, so be it you know you don't win all trades and i'm very transparent about that overall we've been killing it i hope that you realize and if you've been following the channel for the the last little while at least a month you would have noticed that my positions down here at the bottom bottom of the range are in maximum profits right now and i've been taking profit along the way and render on all these projects all of them go check out go check out the the video list about a month ago we've been piling in and i've been calling the bullish divergence to the upside i just want to right now be very careful not to give my gains back to the market because the market loves taking them back and i'm not giving it to them so i'm taking profits and preparing for either a short or a continuation to the upside once i get those confirmations okay guys so that's what i'm doing here regarding bitcoin bitcoin right now 
looking for that dry powder here to buy the dip or if we're going to continue to the upside i'm definitely going to get back in around this level and i'm still happy because look the gains that we made are since we bought the dips down at these levels guys i'm still in profit so i don't mind sacrificing a little bit of my gains all good all good all right so let's look at coin gecko guys obviously if you have any projects that you want to me to cover here this evening let me know in the chat or in the comment section below and of course you can hit me up on all those socials and i'll definitely produce a video outlining my strategy okay like let's look at some of these gainers let's look at some of these losers and see what opportunities we have 24 hours what do we got okay see baby doge is still on the map going high and these these meme coins are waking up just a bit i'm still not convinced that it's meme coin season just yet we will get the money flow the money flow is an interesting concept we get the money into bitcoin people take profits we get them people get bored then we get the money into the flow right it back into alts people it rallies people take profits they get bored and then they have a lot of gains and then they say you know what let's have some fun let's get into meme coins because we can get some real gains there with you know just with like a little bit or a fraction of the gains that we made on those other trades so that's usually what happens we see the money flow then either you get wrecked in the meme coin meme coins or you make profits and you walk away and then you get those fat dips and, and the cycle continues round and round and round okay so one of the projects that i wanted to talk about is near protocol and it happened to be one of the top gainers only three and a half percent no big deal but i do want to see what's been happening with near protocol so let's give it a look um it, it it did it did break out we can see that the bearish divergence in four hour did break out but as we speak we are still creating a lower high which means that the bearish divergence is still intact no matter what even if we came up and we spike in fact now i'm actually more bearish than usual in fact because that means at the end of the day that means that we've already kind of back tested this area and we got rejected significantly look at this wick to the up that that we have here it's, it's just basically a morning star hanging out there blow off top type, type of situation okay and look at the red histogram bar on the volume so we can see that the bears took control right at this level and this was meant to be a liquidity grab the uh, price action looking left look at the the volume gap acted as resistant basically the market front run this scenario right here that we pointed out earlier okay it just they took profits a lot earlier because the volume gaps are really strong here when you see these gaps be prepared to take profits and i always suggest taking them a little bit earlier because you never know they might just the market might just start taking profits a bit earlier you keep trading you keep losing uh, then you need to get yourself a coach to mentor you on your trade it, that's the truth that's the truth you you keep trading and you keep losing then you need to get yourself a, a coach but sometimes it's just about practice to be honest yeah it it, it it's true you you didn't get yeah for sure a mentor is always good a mentor is always good but sometimes you don't have to pick one person and personally i never had no mentor whatsoever and i've been doing this for years i have no mentor whatsoever and it's just a matter of toughening up that's what worked for me and believe it or not getting into trades without a, a, a lot of capital just volume just volume just trading getting practice learning the, the the whole psychology learning how the market plays how the the price action moves and that exposure getting burnt and getting back in getting burnt and getting back in it's almost like tuition fee a lot of people say that but it's kind of true it's the tuition fee no this Derek. you know what i heard this before no. no 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 sorry guys just give me a second sorry guys let me just take care of this yeah just taking care of it it's it's a, that's an, I took him seriously for a bit. And there we go. Hopefully I took care of that. Thanks, Paul, Polyculture. Yeah, and it's unfortunate. These are the type of people that we got to get rid of. You know, just trying to take advantage of people. That's That totally goes against everything. I, I, just forget it. Okay, let's forget that even happened. Hopefully I took care of it. Now, 
what I was saying here is this actually starts to make me believe that, you know, it gets me a little bit. Yeah, it's it, it just gets me b uh, believing that we could be rounding off here. And the reason being is that this pump to the upside with the continuation of bearish divergence is going to look so bearish on a daily perspective. Look at that. So sorry, guys, let me just kind of look at that on the on the daily. Look at that that pullback the green candle wick right there and then here we are back here we got rejected now yes we got a little bit of volume here on the green yeah we're rounding off but for me this is like potential liquidity grab right here and a potential reversal pattern that could be event eventually happening now i just want to stress out here that we didn't even reach the 200 ema so we could be gearing up for that impulse to the upside like many other altcoins have been doing. I'm just afraid with near protocol because we are still creating that bearish divergence that I don't want to get caught in the crossfire. I want to make sure that I protect my gains and protect my position. So this bearish divergence is still intact. We did not create a higher high on the RSI and on the daily, we're still bearish divergence. Very, very clear. And we could be pivoting uh, on the on, on near protocol very soon. So I don't know for sure, but statistics are telling me take it easy that's it take it easy let's find another opportunity that's a lot clearer now uh, another one that i want to talk about is algorand now hold on before i go i want to before i switch charts i want to see one thing yeah the volume gaps there's this one right here that we kind of cleared already and then after that there's a lot of price action not feeling it not feeling it let's look for a better opportunity algorand what's up with algorand again this uh this scenario is still bearish divergence uh hesitating right here at the critical area of resistance looking left look at all this price action if we get to the 200 ema that would be a great great opportunity uh to either break above or get rejected now if we see here we do have a potential um cup and handle that could form if we get rejected and consolidate here yeah yes it's not the completely nicely rounded but it's fair game guys because this recovery is definitely here and we are hesitating look at this chop action right close to this breakout point if we could eventually get exhausted and start consolidating here and then we're looking for a break of the neckline which is so confluent with the point of control at about 30 cents or so so maybe we do break up and get this um cup and handle going or we do get rejection now remember i don't know why but hillary that name hillary is getting uh hillary clinton is getting involved here with algran um honestly um i don't know what to take from it i didn't have time to get into you know reading exactly what her involvement is or anything but you know when you hear the name and you see the face it's like you know what it, what's going on you know what i mean it, it, it's usually tied to um stories of corruption and we don't want to we don't want to be about that okay let me look at ssv let me write that down so i keep a log ssv so algorand still in that bearish divergence phase if we get in the four hour what's going on we did not create a higher high on the rsi still downward sloping and this is what i'm saying this is these are the fake outs that we look for and these liquidity grabs that we look for and then eventually the divergence is very evident on larger time frames and the larger time frame divergences are massive and that's where you get the the nice retracements the 20 percent 15 percent 30 percent retracements and that's when we're going to be ready okay so right now i'm still risk off and if you're planning on going long into a trade make sure you put those stop losses ready to go and and those take profits any volume gaps here on the four hour if we break above not really so the pattern is really good but i don't see you know the only thing we have is maybe this trend line that we could but good luck getting there that's a tough that's a tough one Let's get back on the daily any volume gaps really this little ga this gap right here which we're we're way above if we break above this yeah we have huge gaps above definitely but we have a lot of work to do before we even think about that okay let's look at ssv what's ssv i don't think i know of it no i i don't think i have a chart i don't maybe this first time i hear of it maybe i gotta do some research it's always something to learn in crypto definitely and if you're not that means you're falling behind and this looks new where's our dinosaur is our dinosaur here and it's probably just newly listed on binance and i did usd maybe that's not the best charts give me a second let me find a better chart maybe i just clicked the wrong one 
let's do SSV USDT. No, not here. USD. Gate. No, thank you. Coinx. Why? Why is the Binance chart? That they don't have a USDT. USDD on Polynex. I don't know which chart should I do. Which chart? I don't know. I I, I usually do a, a nice uh, USDT. I don't know if I should just do the plain US dollar. What are you feeling, Poly Culture? What do you what What should I look at? Unless I go to Coinax or a Big Get Spot USDT Spot on Big Get. No, which coin? Which which uh, exchange should I um, focus on here? Hmm. Okay. Let's try. Um, let's look at the USD USD and see what's good there. It's the same thing. It's 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 pegged to the US dollar, so it's not a big deal. At the end of the day, I would have liked to see more price action. That's the reason. Unless it was just newly. Uh, at the BUSD, so the Binance, I didn't even see that there in the list. Just look at the USD. Maybe there's more price action on the BUSD. Let's look at that. SSV. Bitcoin, ETH. Yeah, I don't even see that here. That's... Sorry. This is VBUSD. This is the one. Is that what I'm looking at right now? Let's check it out on the on the orange. Just make it something different. So I get, don't get confused. Let's check this out. Okay, it's the same one. Yeah, we're good. Okay, fine. Now, um, it seems to be like newly listed. There's not much price action. It's the daily, of course. Uh, we are definitely overbought. It's clear. And the and 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 look at the EMAs on this MACD. Really heated heated price action it's scary right this is part of the thing this is kind of scary because do you want to buy into this green price action do you want to buy into the pump or do you think bitcoin is going to retrace and usually when bitcoin retraces it really does drag down some of the some of these altcoins so i'm i'm afraid and when i see things like this i'm like you know is there a good risk to reward ratio fundamentally you could be super super fundamentally bullish you know what i mean um and if you're fundamentally bullish, you believe in it, you don't care what the price is. You start dollar cost averaging because you think that this thing is going to go to the moon. And that's great. Yeah, you, you know what I mean? Uh, and and I'm looking, and that's great to be fundamentally bullish, but you got to be prepared to be a long-term holder if that's the case. And me personally, I'm not that type, especially with speculative assets, assets that don't have much of a track record, don't much of a history. And this is where we're at with SSV and an LS, LSD coin. Not even familiar. Not even familiar. Yeah, I don't want to hop in yet. Yeah, that's the thing. You know, I'll do some research when I have some time. I have a few projects that I want to look at, definitely. I'll put this on my list. When I have some free time, I do try to keep up with the, what's going on in some of these projects. It's hard, man. It's hard. But we can see that we're rallying. We're doing good. It's doing great. It's time to take profits if you're in this. Or at least start trailing up your stop losses because this thing can continue. You never know. Especially that we're in overbought territory. In overbought territory, you never know how long this thing is going to stay up here and continue rocketing. But you have no indication when, when it's going to cool off. And that's where it gets risky. We're not here to gamble. We're here to make sure that we're in a position where we have a probability of making gains. It's all about pro pro oh, liquid staking derivatives. Okay, so Sorry, buddy. I didn't get the, the acronym there. Okay, cool. Liquid staking. Yeah. And Frax is another one that I got to look into because they offer the same solution. They offer the same services. And this is this is a narrative that I definitely want to start looking into this liquid staking and what exactly what services do they offer the end customer and solutions do they offer to the end customer. And I think when you thinking about staking, we need some options nowadays to, to definitely uh, keep us safe. Th this is the reality. So this is a narrative that I definitely want to look into. And this is why Frax is pumping. And this could be why SSV right now is doing so well. But again, from a, a risk to award ratio opportunity this is scary let's get into the four hours see if we get some more price action chop 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 to the top while price rsi is slowly coming down that's bearish divergence now 
Could we get another impulse? Very possible. As we speak, we're trying to impulse to the upside, but we're still continuing this bearish divergence where the RSI is still coming down and the price action is going up. It could even be class B bearish divergence where the price action continues go going up, but the uh, RSI goes sideways. And that's very possible, right? Some Something where, um, what the heck is this doing here? Let's clean this up something where um and look at the volume look at the volumes coming down while the price action goes up um no worries no worries earth angel no worries and the, well, as the price action goes up yeah we see the volume coming down that's a divergence in itself so it's a bit scary when, when there's no volume so maybe we're going to get that retracement where would i expect the retracement we could take a, a fibonacci from the 10 or the 950 mark or we can take a fibonacci from this low you know we can be conservative about the the retracement we have the goal uh the 200 ema on the four hour right here with the value area high right here uh at about 20 dollars 1970 or so this cluster right here is important look at the vpvr we have some clear area key areas to look out for one is right here the beginning of this volume gap and then we have the closing of this volume gap which it doesn't really close that hard if you notice that this cluster is the only level of support that it would have if it were to back test. It's not the biggest. This is the area of support. This cluster right here, the beginning here. And if we happen to have enough power to break through this high, this high, and that high, the next area to look out for would be about $13, $13.50. I'm not really, you know, considering that we're in a nice bull run right now, a, 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 you know, bear market rally, maybe we're lucky enough we could get down to about 19 dollars 1950 or so by the dip and then if we get a bounce off this 200 ema confident with this um price action right here based on the vpvr and if we do a fibonacci, fibonacci retracement that looks like an 886 retracement more or less if we consider this the top more or less you know what i mean 786 886 dca right around the zone golden pocket is not bad either so scattering some buys right at 21 to 20 to about 19 scattering right around here with dollar cost give you a dollar cost average opportunity that if we were to cast and come down eventually get some support around here and continue to the upside you got in from a good risk toward ratio opportunity that's it now if we came down even further guys you know that we could break below the 16 and then snap right all the way down to the point of control and that's another scenario that you got to be really aware of and if you're in spot the only risk you're really taking is that you may have to hold for a bit longer and that you may have to have enough conviction that if we do come down to lower levels that you might have to reaccumulate a little bit more here at the bottom of the range so that when we do get that recovery you know, you're in profits a lot earlier and you can you know hedge against that drop and that's the only strategy that you can really employ that really works is dollar cost averaging and wait for those pullbacks and wait for areas of confluence now we of course we wait for the rsi to get a little bit of a, a retracement we want the rsi to get to the extremities is the rsi currently at the extremities yeah it has and it has yet to completely reset if you think about it, the last time it reset to the into the um oversold territory was a while ago in december december 16th like that's 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 a long time ago right so the reality is we're due for a pullback down to over over um sold territory and when we get there that's when we're going to get the the drop you know the 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 momentum to the downside where we can buy dips so looking here is not bad and of course if we break below um again this low which is at about 16 i'm gonna put some volume gap indicators just in case break below there yeah it looks like the next area to look out for for sure is here and then golden this is a, yeah then here point of control is another gap this gap is huge so let's be very careful here this gap is large not much price action other than a few stutters in the middle and you can see that based on the vpvr this right here could act as support it could but the this is a real support area look at that huge and it's an accumulation phase based on all this price action to so the greatest level of support right be here and if we get support here we're still getting a higher low which is good right so volume gap there we have another volume gap that we need to be very clear about which is this this volume gap right here if we we can snap right to the bottom okay 
right to the bottom if we break below hit here now this is an interesting area just be careful because we could go range bound for a little bit and consolidate here and then we got to make sure that either we break to the top and continue to the upside or if we break down we're going to get down to lower levels and you buy the dip again so it's all about your time frames if it's on the four hour a pullback to here might and especially if the rsi resets on the four hour we could just bounce to the upside one more time and give another test to the previous highs but we don't know if this is the actual top right now so all of this is very speculative we need some m patterns we need a head and shoulders formation to get a little bit of confidence that this could be the top okay that's a pretty much in-depth analysis on my behalf these are the strategies that i use and i don't buy green candles i don't buy pumps to the upside there's no way i, get, I got wrecked so much in the past and i'm not a, i'm not about taking risk never quant your loss are you using leverage what's your position what do you like are you long are you short let me look at quant no problem polyculture no problem that's what i'm here 7 30 eastern you can join me here we talk about crypto whatever you need we gotta succeed that's it we got another bull run happening very soon we got to be prepared that's all i look at that's how i look at it so we got a nice pullback on quant it's decent it's not bad if we hit the 0.5 fib and we're hesitating there we're using the 200 ema on the four hour as support not bad you know so it all it all depends you know if you're short if you're in a short if you got in short or if you went in long here at the bottom i don't know what, how, how you're in losses the only way you're in losses is if you you basically went long right here at the top which you know a bearish divergence at the, on this rsi would have suggested that we're losing momentum so yeah it, for me it looks like a scenario that we need to just wait maybe start dcaing just a little bit buy a little bit here at the 0.5 buy a little bit more at the golden pocket dollar cost average we're seeing that the um, rsi on the four hours is starting to kind of reset just a little bit uh long just a little leverage okay it's not a big deal so that's a good learning experience a four dollar fee for learning is great that's a great learning great learning fee that's the ones that I like. That were how I started. I started as doing little trades. I started off with ten dollars, five dollars, and doing things like that, and seeing if I can double my money. And that's the point. If you can do it with ten dollars or five dollars or whatever, you can you can do it with a thousand dollars. It's just that you got to control those nerves, and usually that's the hardest part. It's the nerves. It's the stress. It's the lack of sleep. It's the going to bed with your phone and waking up with your phone by your side. That that whole life is stressful. So this is this is why you kind of have to kind of like toughen up, you know, build that, you know, uh, thick skin so that you can handle the markets no matter what happens. But a four dollar fee, I'll take that any day. So a little bit of a loss, no problem. You went long with leverage, no big deal. Um, personally, if we do get a bounce off the two hundred EMA, is not bad. I would get in lower time frames. Do I see bullish divergence on the four hour on this price action? slightly coming down slightly pivoting to the upside it looks like we could get another little impulse to the upside to be honest let's get in the one hour a little bit of a pivot point here happening yeah we can see that we're rounding off and now we're getting the rsi momentum to the upside but how much upside potential could we have while bitcoin is looking slumpy this is the thing i'm not totally convinced that we're going to go high really high you get what i mean um so it, it, yeah i don't like that we in the four hour we didn't get to the extremities this is the thing right we're kind of range bound yeah we got a little bit we didn't get to oversold territory so i wouldn't have entered a trade myself long because we i like the extremities look at the extra this, this is what the extremities give you let's get into the example here when the rsi gets into the extreme levels at 26 here on the rsi look where the price is we want the extremities look at the extremities but this is the hardest time to buy when everything is like at the bottom, red, depressed, that's the hardest time, but you know, that's the best time. And that's where you gotta develop that thick skin, right? We come down, look at the RSI, extremity, buy, dollar cost average, critical level, nice area of support, beautiful scenario, right? Is there divergence? Price action is coming down. RSI is going up. Look at that. That's when you start getting in. Price action is coming down okay rsi 
is going up that's bullish divergence start dcaing dca dca eventually we might get a pump a retest of liquidity maybe scaring some people out shaking in their pants and then we actually get the rocket to the top where we finally get this rsi nicely reset and we did we got it reset here too could have taken profits and got back in here based on that theory and that strategy right so if we employ the same strategy right now we've we're at extremities right right here we're at extremities right here on this R side, right? But now, did we finally get extreme on the opposite end? No. So personally, to go long is kind of scary for me. Uh, the, the risk is still there. And the fact that Bitcoin as a leading indicator is looking a little slumpy, if we break that neckline, we could come down and this thing could, quant can come down back to the bottom of the range, back and test this, this trend line like it has done so many times. One, two, three, four, it, it, why not the fifth? And look at this pattern. It looks like a head and shoulders formation. Shoulder, head, shoulder, come back down, touch the neckline, break down, and there we are we're in trouble all right so for me it's all about the risk is it worth taking the risk when we're not in the extreme extreme conditions either extremely overbought or extremely oversold with some uh, uh, confirmations in certain areas like price action or emas and that's why I, I i kind of combine them so that i can get confluence because the confluence gives you confidence right that's that that's the strategy now the 200 ema is definitely acting as support here that's the only last line of support that i have that I, it could be that we get a little bit of a bounce and maybe get an m pattern here and then it'll give you an opportunity to either exit with some profits or at least you know break even and walk away and that's not bad even if it's a four dollar trade if you want to record it as percentage that's the best way to do forget about the money what you should be worried about is percentage what a percent gains did i make and you want to be consistent in those gains percentage wise not dollar value Okay, forget about dollar value for a while, because until you're actually profitable with percentages, there's no point of worrying about money because you're not profitable. You'll just lo you'll, you're losing, right? So you want to be able to be, prove to yourself that you can be profitable percentage-wise with a small amount of money. That's that's it. So if we do bounce, we are still looking for that bearish divergence. We're still looking for that reset. We're still waiting on Bitcoin for an indicator, and right now, yeah, pivot point here. Can, you know, I don't know. Quant not really feeling it render render for sure render let's talk about render i like render render is one of my main projects that i love i always believed in render um yeah render is one of them yeah in the red four dollars i would get oh no big deal four dollars is nothing but if you've only entered I don't know what your position size is. If your position size is large and you're only in the red $4, it doesn't matter. You can exit. No big deal. But if your position size, you know, um, small and you're only down, you know, you're down $4 and you just want to prove to yourself percentage wise, just stick in there and try to DCA and see what you can do. Put another little bit in. See, you know what I mean? It all depends on your position size. Position size is one way you can reduce your risk. And it's a big thing. It's a big show. This is a long conversation, actually, guys. I plan on releasing some strategic videos one day about what works for me. Obviously, what works for me not may not work for you, but it definitely works for me. Now, render. I have these green arrows here because I'm hoping and praying, keeping my fingers crossed that I get another opportunity to buy the dip. With some of these gains that I've made, I went on leverage really early on in, in, on with render and I took profits a little bit too early, but it's okay. I'm happy with that. And my spot positions are in profit, so I'm good, but I'm my short-term spot positions, I've been taking profits little by little. I think my last buy order um, is a little bit higher than this, but all good. Now we're getting pullbacks. You know, we're getting pullbacks and this is expected. It, it, you know, when we see weaknesses in the heavyweights like Bitcoin and Ethereum and we see pullbacks, expect that the top runners, you know, like Render, they've been it's been running hard, is going to get that pullback. And we talked about this, right? I'm expecting a full reset 
before I get confident again for a bullish divergence to the upside. I want to see a reset. I want it to get down. I want the RSI to get down to oversold territory. I want to see that the MACD is looking like it's had enough, that it got hit enough and that the bulls are ready to respond and usually that happens right about the around the golden pocket even as close as the 0.55 and the reason why i say 0.55 right now is because let me kind of correct this because this is outdated let's see boom uh golden pocket is good yeah we have the 200 ema creeping right behind that golden pocket since this is our top right now we could still get a bounce off this 50 make an m pattern get continue that bearish divergence and finally completely roll over where we come down to the golden pocket now i'm not talking bearish here i'm just keeping fingers crossed that that would happen because as a bull i want more right i'm not saying that we're gonna the market's gonna collapse i just want to have more right and that's what a true bull thinks of it not just pumping bags because there's no point you want to take profits and fill the bag so you can pump them again right so that's the strategy for me it's been working for me for many years and right now we are looking like a retracement let's get into the daily quick all right let's get into the daily i should use the shift on my keyboard so we keep centered but all good um really the daily the bearish divergence is not quite there but we can not quite there i'm not convinced on the daily with this bearish divergence it's on the four hour but not in the not no not on the daily so we could get a response on the daily we could get a response to the upside again still it's not over the macd the emas are still facing up really really positively yes we are getting some pale green histogram bars uh let's see what's happening here we're starting to roll over just a little bit on these emas sure and the macd still green pale green histogram bars let's we can get another impulse right at the tail end what i've noticed over the years of trading and looking at charts is right here right at the end right when we're uh, trying to cross over to the bearish control zone is where we get the last impulse to the upside where people get wrecked right here let's see if that's true let's see uh, 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 let's get these emas let's 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 back test this a little bit okay so if we look let's start from here right at the end we get another impulse right at the, this is so wide that it's not even that fair but right at the end let's see this and we came down eventually here look at this chop action right at the end boom right at the end we went green 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 but then right at the end spike to the upside and that's the liquidity grab right at the end when people oh the, the macd is going bearish yeah and you know what i'm gonna wreck you so we go up wreck a bunch of people and grab some liquidity and then we finally dump so usually it's when you know the critical levels that's where we get the last impulses look right here right here boom 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 coming down and okay fine we came down but we get liquidity grabs everywhere Right, these wicks these wicks wreck people so be careful um but i'm saying that ultimately i'm expecting a reversal it might take some time on the daily and larger time frames on the four hour it looks like it's being fulfilled as we speak to be honest the other side can reset and then we can get down to the 0.55 maybe as low as the golden pocket and then i would wait for these oscillators to give me a little bit more information if i were to dca even more we can get down to the 786 we will have to wait for the rsi let's see where the rsi goes and correlation to the price action if the rsi resets and we're all the way at the golden pocket already that's great start buying the dip start dcaing um if the rsi resets and we're just going sideways guys maybe it's time to start thinking about a long position because sometimes in bullish conditions bearish momentum gets neutralized that happens all the time especially in, in bullish in bullish conditions in the last bull run how many times did we identify bearish divergence but all we did is go sideways we planked and that's enough bearishness sometimes to just completely reset rsis or any momentum oscillators and if that were to happen you would want to start building a long position once you see these rsis reset even if we didn't get the dip and that may as well happen for bitcoin that could happen and that's why i'm saying now we have to start looking at it as a range bound scenario where we have a range where we're going sideways because if we totally reset on this four hour and we get to oversold while still going sideways it's time to accumulate and prepare for a, a long position because the momentum is now going to pick up to the upside and go to the extremities to the upside while we all we did is go sideways with for a little breather and that could happen right so nobody knows exactly what's going to happen it's just a game of probability guys that's all it is statistics we try to get an edge and we look at some of this price action to give us that edge Thank you.
that's all it is you know probability okay um were there any re other requests talked about render yeah dc in yeah i hope i hope i was clear with that one e eagle eye eagle eye fishing i hope i was clear on that one regarding render i love render render is great it's uh, definitely a solution uh, for uh graphical um basically sh sharing your graphic card uh resources on the blockchain and getting um rewarded for it pretty good okay pretty cool i like that a lot of those web3 um applications are are interesting definitely necessary okay let's look at if there are no more um requests let's go look at uh coin gecko see what else we can see here let's look at the losers okay oh render wow glad you brought that up and look at our friend singularity the ai token now it's not a huge pullback i'm not going to celebrate in comparison to the rally that it has it's only been down 27 percent, but it could be the beginning right it could be the beginning don't forget that we talked about the graph as well while it was rocketing to the top the other day i think it was uh, the day before yesterday let's go check that out and i came up with a video letting you know be careful take those profits we're overheated it's time to like don't be afraid don't be afraid of taking profits so walk away and be happy with what you made don't be greedy don't get slaughtered out there because the market wants to take back your your your, your gains especially your gains and here we are with that pullback let's look at the graph the graph and look at singularity grt where are we at? with grt i forget where my my chart is i think it's in the orange but let's do a quick search yeah it's in the orange all right here's there's so many projects here filecoin i got so much going on grt where are you right here the graph so this was the area where i released a video the golden pocket 1.618 was you know a very statistically speaking a very interesting place because people take profits both at the golden pocket extension level 1.618 and extension level 1.27 and 1.34 between this range is a common place for profit taking and guys we hit that we hit the 1.618 and we retraced and you know if you were able to take some profits at least now you can breathe about it you're not stressed you know and the, the nerves are calm because you have some profits and if you dabble in a little bit more here at the bottom no big deal you're back in you got a little bit of a um um a fire a little bit of a sale but not only that you bought yourself some wiggle room right you got some room now because you made some gains and if you start buying in and you you lose a little bit it's okay because you have basically if you were able to time even not the top 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 but just a little bit let's say you're you're up you you basically have the opportunity to scoop up 18 percent more tokens so you have wiggle room now to play based on those gains so it's important to walk away with profits when you can and it hit our take profit like it actually overshot our take profit on our long positions here at the bottom of the range that we were accumulating a month ago based on the the analysis a month ago we were talking about all these projects a month ago uh the, the sec wants to ban staking for yeah these are all things that we got to pay attention to yeah let's put this up this is important yeah the sec wants to ban staking for U u.s retail there's a lot being said about that i just didn't want i wanted some time to digest that before i even made a, a statement about it because you know the sec says a lot of stuff and I don't know what they're going to do, if they're going to follow through or not, especially when you see the rest of the world kind of, you know, being bullish about things. Why are they going to, you know, kind of, you know, tread, go backwards? I don't know. I'm very hesitant with with the with the, the SEC, you know, and Gary and all of those guys. Those guys, you know, they, they, they just talk a lot and let's see what happens. They're making FUD, they're, you know, FUD is their, their, their middle name. That's what they do. They want the markets to correct based on FUD, not actual action, because action, they got to stand by their decisions and their actions. But with talking and talking FUD, they don't have to. They just talk and make random statements without any follow through. For me, I don't want to react to that until I see actual follow through. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much, Earth Angel. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I, I, it's my passion. I do this full time. I'm a programmer. That's what I do. Um, 
you know, I'm a developer and at the end of the day, I understand the fundamentals on how these things are built and what they offer as a solution. I always use this in, on the stream. I always talk about this because a lot of people that don't understand crypto don't understand that all it is is an invention. It's a solution to a problem. That's why things people invent things. People invent things to improve the way we um, basically socialize and the way we govern and the way we do things. And crypto is definitely going to offer an opportunity. Let's hope that the rest of us, the rest of um, yeah, us kind of appreciate those scenarios. And they're not just in it for the money because that's the problem. That's why we get huge dumps. People take profits and walk away because they don't understand the fundamentals. They're in it for the quick money. We're not. We're here for, you know, buying the dip, buying at the bottom of the range and holding and making those big, big generational wealth opportunities. Definitely. So uh, the graph, great opportunity. And for some reason, the graph is one of those projects that are very spoken of to be very correlated with AI. And I understand why people would say that, but that's a whole other conversation that we would have to kind of debunk. Maybe that's something for another day. Wow. I was in town all with my representative tonight and I asked him about what he's going to do about the corruption in the SEC. Hopefully they take action. Good on you for speaking up. That's important. Speaking up. Not a lot of us do. And, you know, the crypto community definitely needs to have a voice. So good on you. Good stuff. Okay. So render. Here we are. Pull back. Maybe we get a deeper one. The MACD is looking like it's ready to dump. Look at that. This is beautiful bearish scenario. Guys, I hate to be celebrating bearish news, but I am because I want to buy more. And I'm sure you do too. So let's wait for this to kind of get into a phase of exhaustion from a bearish perspective. We want this to come down. We want it to kind of roll over. We want the EMAs to kind of maybe get into the bearish control control zone and look exhausted and get some crosses and so on and then we'll start looking for buy the dip opportunities we want the rsa the rsi to come down and obviously also look exhausted that's what we want we want the opposite of what we see here we want come down and then start buying and accumulating hopefully get another opportunity to go for another long trade this is done so i'm over with that one okay um what else do we have what else do we have to say i think i'm done for tonight guys it was a good stream we covered quite a bit. Thank you for, you know, all your input and, and being here with me this evening. Don't forget, I'm here every evening, 730 Eastern, talking crypto news and price action. Of course, you can follow me on all those socials. I'm also there coming up with some creative ways to engage. That's the way you do it, guys. Subscribe, click the bell so you don't miss out on any of my videos, live streams or anything like that. All right, I'm done. Take care, guys. Have a good one and don't forget, buy the dip.